I said because the, what you just said, there is verba- it's a verbatim translation. It's a literal translation of a statement made by our noble and honorable Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago. And I'm not making this stuff up. Go. You check it out yourself. He said, really? He said, what did he say? So I shared with him, the, I said it in Arabic, and then I made uh, you know, my best attempt to translate it. And he was like, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. That's why I'm proud of Islam. Because there isn't any good except that Islam taught me. And if there's anything that wasn't there, someone may say, Sheikh, wait a minute. What about the use of iPad? iPads are great inventions, right? You yourself have one, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a proud owner of an iPad. So where, what does Islam say about iPads? Or what about this technology or that technology or this habit or that habit? Or this practice, this custom or that custom? Right? What about those things? Well, the beauty of those Islamic principles is that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to enjoy in anything that is good and be part of it and embrace it. And in fact, we are told that wisdom and goodness is the, uh, an item that a believer pursues. al hikmatu dalatul mu'min. Right? It is, it is something that belongs to you. It's part of your belongings that is lost. And you're always in pursuit of it. So wherever you find it, then you are most worthy of it. You are most worthy of it. And you're part of it. Now this was understood. And for those of us who are facing, now we are being faced with this challenge, there are some people who are trying to define to us what Islam is. They're defining our own faith to us. And we're sitting there, you know, uh, becoming very defensive and, and some of us are getting nervous. Some of us are even, you know, maybe, maybe some of us, right, are questioning their own faith. That's because we're not aware of it. That's, that's because we're not well versed in Islam. We took it for granted. And that doesn't work anymore. So now we are being challenged so we can go back and Google it. And find out what Google is telling us about Islam. Right? And then we have, we have, we have this basic uh, connection to it that helps us because Google just brings everything, right? So you basically distinguish and you start filtering things. And you're like, no, no, that sounds more like Islam. Right? The right thing always sounds more like Islam. And the crazy stuff, you're like, no, that's not the Islam that I know. That's not the Islam that I was taught. That's not the Islam that I see. Right? Isn't that true? That's, that's true. So, here in our history, here's a story. Early on, and now you have to understand that in the early days, because some people come and tell you, no, that's what Islam used to be in the early days, and then later it changed. Later the true, you know. Now, you, you have to understand that whatever was taught in the early days of Islam, that is what? The foundation. That's the foundation. Whatever was taught first, that's the foundation. That's the most basic. So what do we know of that? We know that the companions of the Prophet wasallam were not necessarily embraced by their society. They were not necessarily treated like first class citizens or like even citizens. We know that they were subjected to much more hatred and bigotry and Islamophobia than we, we can ever dream of, of, of facing. And, and we seek refuge in Allah from, from being subjected to something like that. We shouldn't be looking, you know, right? We seek refuge in Allah from something like that. So in the middle of that heat, the Prophet ﷺ gave permission to some of his companions to leave, to leave Mecca and go to Abyssinia, where there was a ruler, the Nugus of Abyssinia, the king of Abyssinia. Now when they were there, they lived for a little bit, uh, you know, in security and peace. But soon the Meccans sent 
an envoy. They, they sent basically their, their ambassador to claim back these rebels and bring them back. And now in order for that to happen, he had to what? Do the same thing. Demonize them. Dehumanize them. Call them rebels. Terrorists. Right? B uh, uh, basically use scare tactics. And start a smear campaign against them. People who just left Mecca, they, 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 left, they left the most beloved place to them. Because they wanted to worship their Lord in peace. And because they were pursuing freedom. So the Meccans arrived to Abyssinia and of course they made a case for themselves. So the Nugus, but he was a smart man. Najashi, may Allah's mercy be upon him, was a very smart and just ruler. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ anticipated. He said he is indeed just. So Najashi said, wait a minute, let, let, let us give them, let, and this is what smart people do. And that's what you should spread. You should tell your friends and your colleagues, the smart people just don't, don't, don't listen to one side and uh, judge based on one side's view. They don't. Right? If you want to learn about Islam and Muslims, you go and ask Muslims. You don't go and ask Fox News. 